Hi, this is Matt. Uh, I'm here with Albie and Chris. And today on the podcast, we have a very special guest with us. Uh, we have joining us Davida Williams, who played Leslie in the latest episode of Quantum Leap. Davida, welcome to yes. the show. Hello. How are you guys? Uh, we're great. We're very happy you could join us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so before we talk about your time on Quantum Leap, and we've just seen the episode, we're, we're super excited about it, so we, we want to delve into that as soon as possible. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got started in acting, a bit about your background? Yeah, so I grew up in Los Angeles, and I you know, kind of have a family of artists. My dad was a musician. He played the guitar for Michael Jackson for about 30 years and wow. Madonna for years. And um, yeah, I always wanted to be in entertainment, just not in that capacity, not in music. I have a little sister who's a musician. Um, so I started auditioning very young and I started doing sitcoms. I did Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Sister, Sister and all those shows. And then during high school, I did a Disney show called Lizzie McGuire. And yeah, I've been working ever since. Well, so um, a child star and not not everyone who um, who starts off in the business that young sticks with it. For you, was was there ever any doubt when you when you kind of grew up? Did you think maybe I'll shift somewhere else? Yeah, I definitely took breaks um, after I graduated high school and stopped. Lizzie McGuire was done. I took a break for a couple of years. I worked at an agency, a modeling agency, because I thought maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to be on the other side. And, and then I realized I definitely don't want, <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've definitely taken breaks and and uh, tried different things. But then I just always end up back. Back where it all started. Yeah. Um, so so what um, what settled you back into acting after your after your break doing modeling what's um talk us through kind of well i wasn't actually a model i was i was a modeling oh. agent like a junior agent okay. and it was just it was it's a lot of work i have the utmost respect for agents and mm. managers and yeah it's a lot um but then i remember i heard about an audition for a uh soap opera and i had an audition in like two years and i was like you know what let me just try. So I took the train to Brooklyn and I auditioned for it and I ended up booking it. So then I just quit my job and started a soap opera. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how I got back. Yeah, that'll do it, right? Yeah. 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 I booked some work. I'm back yeah. in. <laughs> I was like, you make it sound so easy. And it really, it's, mm -hmm. it, I know that did sound really easy saying that, but I, it, it's definitely not. It's definitely a lot harder than that, but it just happened to, mm be the right role in the right situation mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah. So um, how did uh, that lead to you uh, getting the role on Quantum Leap? Uh, that was a tape that was one of, I don't know if you know how the auditions go now. We don't really do a lot of in-person auditions. You have to send mm -hmm. in a tape to casting directors and all of that. And that was one of my first tapes of the year. Um, and then I taped it, I sent it in and you kind of just have to send those things in and forget about them because you never know if you're going to hear anything. And, um, and then like a week and a half later, my manager called and was like, you got it. So I, it was exciting. It's a, such a great show to be a part of. So. And what, what was the turnaround like after you'd, after you'd heard that great news that you'd, you landed the role? Was it straight into filming? It was pretty quick. Their, their episodes are about eight days long, mm -hmm. which um, a lot of shows are five days, but theirs are a bit longer. So it was pretty quick because I had to, you have to COVID test now and I had to do a fitting mm -hmm. and um, I got to try on all these really cool clothes from the seventies that they found, which was fun. Uh, even though we only ended up using one outfit, but yeah, I got to try on some really cool stuff. So yeah, it was, it was straight to um, hair and makeup test as well uh mm -hmm. before i shot and then yeah and then shooting awesome did, did you have much say in the final choice of the the costume you said you you tried on a few different outfits no. yeah a few different things i didn't really um you never you don't have that much control especially as a guest star but i loved so many of the things that i tried on so i wasn't it, uh, you know i didn't really care what they chose and they ended up picking <laughs> one of my favorites anyway so yeah oh good 
Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that it wasn't such a flamboyant costume, but that wouldn't have fit the character anyway, because mm-hmm. Leslie was not only a police officer, but she was also trying to avoid attention yes. until the right moment. So. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't too so- over the top 70s. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I, I have to assume that, that that was all a giant set. Um, it looked like it was very expansive. It, it, I know that part of the episode, they were trying to like bring you back to the heyday of flying in the sense where you had these huge jumbo jets that had a couple of floors that had all of the, you know, the cocktails and, and the food and, and everything. And I mean, what, what was it like stepping, stepping onto that set? Because it, it seemed so expansive on camera. It was so cool. I it was it was really cool. I took a lot of behind the scenes videos of the the plane itself because it was awesome. I got to I was sitting in the cockpit for a few scenes and I was like, is this a real plane? And they were like, yep, we're using it. They were using like actual plane parts. Um, so that was it was really cool. I've never actually shot on a plane and I wasn't aware of how they do those kinds of things. And it was cool. It had multiple levels um and you know first class section and cocktail area and i mean i wasn't around for those pl- i don't think i've been on a plane like that so it was, i mean i'm <laughs> sure they you know exist but i like i've never been on a plane that large it was cool it's safe to say that uh, i don't think any of us on this panel have been on a plane that large. No. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was, it would kind of make me a little bit nervous, I think. Just, uh, I don't know how planes work, but having that much metal in the air is just, I don't know how yeah. safe I feel. <laughs> so it was uh, a plane in a building? Is that is that how that worked? Or was it... Did- yeah, they film in a, in a on a lot. And so it was in one of the big sound stages and they just like rebuilt this plane. And then, yeah, we shot in, in it. It was really really cool wow wow so everything was yeah it was literally on this one they actually they were like you're really lucky because a lot of times we go on location and we're all over the place filming um and we just got back from location Mm -hmm. but my entire episode was literally just in this plane so i just had to go to one place every day yeah Um, you're part of the episode. Uh, one of the main parts of the episode is the reveal that you're one of the hijackers. So, um, was it difficult to play like, um, not a hijacker that was a hijacker in the first half? And, and was that different from playing the yeah. hijacker in the second half? <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It was fun. I mean, the director, her name is Linda Mendoza. She was awesome. And she really wanted to make sure that we, I was like, am I playing this kind of mysterious? And she was like, no, we don't want to give anything away. So, you know, I was just trying to really be kind of incognito in the beginning. And then, you know, I reveal my true motives kind of later on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was just trying to not give anything away at the beginning. Did you have any weapons training for that uh, scene where you pull the gun on uh, Ben? So... I have never really had any weapons training. Um, Kate, Caitlin, she was so helpful because, you know, she has this background, this army background. And, and I'm, I'm very hesitant about firearms on set just because I had myself had never done it. And also mistakes happen. And I, you know, I didn't want anything to happen, but she was very, very helpful in, before we shot every single time they do safety testing and all of that kind of stuff. And she wanted to look inside the gun every single time. And, you know, and I learned a lot because there's no real, they don't really teach you. They don't really teach actors beforehand. So you kind of are like thrown into it. And um, so it was really nice to have her there and have her knowledge. Cause she, she knows. <laughs> So tell us a bit about that, that experience on set. You said that you were working with Caitlin a little bit behind the scenes, but, um, you know, give, give us a little bit more about uh, working with, with Ray and um, sort of the, the, the general atmosphere, because it's for, for this um, iteration of Quantum Leap, it's, it's unique to the series. It's the first time they've ever done almost like a bottle show entirely mm-hmm. on such a small stage, mm-hmm. you know, we were just maybe three sets in this one yet, you know, you, you felt, it felt authentic. 
So I just want to know about sort of the process that went into the shooting and then maybe describe some of that stuff for us. Um, well, this, the vibe of the set is so, it's awesome. Everyone is so nice and friendly and um, like the crew and the cast, I can't say enough good things about them. And a lot of times, especially when you come in as a guest star, you're, it can be nerve wracking because you don't know anybody and everybody's already established and they have these relationships. But Raymond is amazing. Kaylin's amazing. Everybody on that show is so cool um and makeup and hair and all of that but um filming itself was actually like really efficient i never waited around i feel like on every set you're always you know sitting around waiting for hours until you go but that was also a testament to linda mendoza the director she knows what she wants and we kind of went in did a couple times moved on she was she was very direct and she knew what she wanted um so you know they were long they were the 12 hour days, like normal, but she, she got it. She pumped it out. We were never over time or any of that. I had a question. Um, you, you have a kissing scene in this episode with Bart, the, the guy who plays the other hijacker, uh, the co-pilot of, of yes. in, in the show, uh, with all the COVID protocols, has that changed things like uh, kissing scenes? And is there a special preparing you have to do or. Yeah, you have to take, cause sometimes when you do do a, you have to do a COVID test like once every four days or something like that. It's like three or four days. And then if you have something like that, you have to do it again that morning before it happens. Mm. Um, so yeah, the protocol has changed a bit. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, could I, could I just, uh, ask you about something else? I rewatched uh, your episode of deep space nine this morning. Uh, do you have any memory of oh that? <laughs> Children of Time. <laughs> I was going to go I got there really too. excited oh when I looked at some and points. saw Deep Space Nine. You know how? You know. Do you, do you have any memory so of that? Funny. I was. You know, it's so funny. I do have a little bit of memory, and I had a girl named Shira that was in the episode, and we stayed in touch. And um, it, it was. I was so young that I didn't understand how cool that job was. You know what I mean? Like, it's such a. Mm-hmm. I mean, Star Trek, it's, it's crazy to be a part of something like that. Um, but I did think it was really cool because I had this, you know, that red jumpsuit. And then I had those spots that they had to draw all over my face. And I remember always, i had never had any kind of makeup like that done to me. So I remember being that age and being like, this is kind of cool. It's like Halloween a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was, yeah, it was pretty awesome to be out, just be on that set and get to kind of, you know, be an alien essentially. And <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun. Long time ago though. Long, time, long, ago. long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you haven't figured out, figured it out where not only, you know, quantum leap fans, but we're three huge Star Trek fans too. I mean, so yeah. <laughs> there's no way you're getting out of the interview Take without of- asking about DS9. <laughs> Tell us everything you can remember about DS9. Yeah, I wish I remembered I wish I remembered more, but I did remember definitely like the the spots and the red mm-hmm. outfit and yeah, it was cool. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. It's cool. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. So I mean I mean um can you you had a a bunch of scenes with with Ray in this one? Can you talk about working with Raymond Lee? Oh, he's so nice. He's just the kindest person, and um, I think you know he's part of the reason why that set is so relaxed because you kind of, the lead kind of sets the tone for the show and how people what people can get away with essentially and mistreatment and things like that. So everyone's just so nice. And um, yeah, he's just, he's really cool and he's really easy to talk to. And we talked about his kids and his family and yeah, he's just like a family guy. We kind of live near each other. Um, Yeah. It it was really, I'm really glad that I got to work with him. I am really glad he's, he's also very talented. So that too. Did anything change from when you got the trip to when you started filming? No, I think the story was pretty much the same. There were a couple of lines that they like changed a little bit or, you know, they would just tweak a couple words here and there. But for the most part, the tape that I did uh, ultimately was the character and the thing, the audition that I did ultimately was what I was doing on screen. It was, it was pretty similar. Yeah. 
I'm interested in understanding more about the the atmosphere on the set um, because you, you talked about it being kind of a, a well oiled machine, um, if I can paraphrase yeah. you. Um, and it, it, everything seemed to be very very smooth and efficient. It, it felt watching it like a very it was a very high energy episode. It, it was one of those episodes that never it didn't let up. It, it didn't let you breathe. We're also as fans watching it, uh, getting ready for the season finale as well. So it's that that just yeah. ups the stakes. Was was there any feeling of that on set, or how did that translate to the feelings on set? Were, was there a kind of a, a feeling of energy there along with that efficiency? There, there was. Um, just, I mean, there were so many scenes that we're so fun and so high energy. I, I mean, when the, we get smoke bombed in the cockpit and we're like choking and banging on the door there, it was a lot of high energy. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of, of also, Oh, there was, there's also this part where, you know, you see a lot of turbulence happening on the flight. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that was just us kind of like shaking in our seats. Like mm -hmm. by our, <laughs> we, we kind of just did that ourselves. There was no actual, nothing was actually shaking. So um, I'm glad you felt that it was such high energy and high stakes because <laughs> I was like, I hope this looks okay. I'm kind of just <laughs> shaking. I, <in> my... <laughs> I, I don't know about the guys. I assume that was on gimbals or something, but was that the old fashioned, you shake around, the camera shakes around and <laughs> yeah, yeah. the I mean, old Star the, Trek even like, method? The, the uh, the kid sitting next to me, who's the, you know, the, the airline owner's son, he was like yeah. shaking his knees under the table, like the little mm -hmm. table on his seat. And he was making it and it was making everything shake. So it was just like it was just us <laughs> <It was laughs> kind of faking that. <laughs> and I was holding oh, champagne, lovely. just going like this. Yeah. And, yeah. So I'm glad it looked all it looked realistic because I've never done anything that high stakes before an action and I'd never held a firearm yeah. in in anything before I did a lot of Disney <laughs> so <laughs> so this yeah. was like a, a first a first of a lot of things for me so I'm glad that it felt the way it was supposed to feel you know mm -hmm. it, it was it was 45 minutes or 42 minutes of sort of non-stop edge of seat okay good almost <laughs> praying for it to just pause and breathe but at the same time okay. not um, <laughs> good it, good good i'm glad and then the end credits happen mm -hmm. oh my God. i'm glad I, I'm, I can't i haven't again i haven't even seen it but i'm excited i'm really excited was the smoke in the cockpit was that all in post or was there actually like some smoke on the day no they they smoked us out <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean it's like that you know that dry ice or whatever it is so it wasn't actual smoke but I, I remember texting my mom really excited about it I was like we're about to get smoke bombed mom <laughs> it was fun it's just you know stuff that I'd never experienced before so so now that you have quantum leap in your re rear view mirror um where can uh our listeners uh be seeing you next you have any up upcoming projects um uh, you know just Right now, last week, actually, with one of my co-stars from Lizzie McGuire, we launched a podcast where we go through the episodes and we talk about the episodes. It's called Living Lizzie, a very McGuire podcast. Um, so I think, the, uh, <laughs> I think the first three episodes are out now. They come out every Friday um, and they're on, you know, Apple and Spotify and wherever podcasts are. And yeah, and just I'm just mm -hmm. sending in lots of tapes and, you know, seeing what works. <laughs> I don't know. E episode by episode podcasts, it'll never take off. It is fan casts. <laughs> well, I mean, people that just talk about their favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I, I was, so, at yeah. first, I was like, "Wait, is he being sarcastic?" Yeah, obviously. No, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a couple of them that I mean, people people like them, and I actually hadn't really yeah. heard of. Them. I'm not a big listener of podcasts. I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. And then suddenly I'm hearing uh -huh. about all of these show podcasts of these like yeah. either current shows or old shows. And you're talking about the episodes. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's been fun. I hadn't seen Jake Thomas, who's my co-star. I hadn't seen him in person in years. So we got together and it was, it was good. It was fun. Yeah, you're on the leading edge of a lot of the uh, the fan casts because it seems to me that uh, the the newest trend is getting the people who are actually mm -hmm. in the show coming back so many years later mm -hmm. to talk about the show. I think the um, the 
one of the top podcasts now is Pod Meets World. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's got three of the main casts from Boy Meets World. So okay. I mean, you're, you're sort of in good. You're on, on the leading edge there okay, when it comes good. to fan cast, So yeah, that's yeah, uh, we, good we, we really started it not really. You know, we're like, if this works, great. If it doesn't, you know. But we've gotten a, a great response, it seems, on social media and stuff. So, and it's been fun, you know. A, a lot of people still like Lizzie McGuire. I was uh, uh, pleasantly surprised watching How I Met Your Father, and they used a flashback to Lizzie McGuire for that show too, because it showed Hillary Duff younger. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's what that's what Jake was telling me is that they mm -hmm. they refer back to her. Um, like Lizzie days, which is, that's cool. Yeah. yeah so that'd be cool. So I, I know Albie is not going to ask because he probably doesn't want to intrude, but um, we have a resident, huge Michael Jackson fan. Oh my gosh. Today. <laughs> yeah. And no I'm idea. sure that he would love to hear any MJ stories you might have to give considering oh. your history yeah. or your yeah. dad's history. Yeah. I guess. You mentioned both yeah, my, it's, both it's, my favorite artists growing up. So <laughs> Madonna and Michael Jackson. <laughs> Madonna. Well. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, both of those were my two first concerts. I was like, baby, baby, you know, Michael holding me backstage. Mm. Um, and it was just such a big part of my childhood because yeah, it was my dad's job for 30 years and they became really close. And, and I'm still, you know, I'm close with a lot of the nieces and the nephews and um, cause they were all close with my dad as well. And, um, but yeah, I just remember like not even really knowing how cool it was. I remember I invited a bunch of my girlfriends and, and guy friends actually one year, I think I was like 12, 13 to Neverland for my birthday. And we like slept there and stuff. And, um, we had our own little like cabins and things and we did all the rides and we had, I had this like there were all these golf carts you'd drive around that were, looked like Escalades and things. And mm -hmm. I didn't have a license. I was very little and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and yeah. And I like, so I, I knew that it was fun going on rides and seeing all the animals, but I don't think I understood like the scope of it until I got older. One of my friends was like, remember you took me to Neverland? <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah, I guess, I guess we did. <laughs> we did do that. Yeah. But my, we, my dad would take me to Neverland all the time. Um, you know, on the weekend or whatever, it was like a two hour drive from LA. And so th those were my, I think my fondest memories was just like having an amusement park to yourself. basically. <laughs> it's pretty crazy to think about. <laughs> what a way to grow up. That's crazy. I know, I know, I know. It really is. It is strange to like say it out loud and be like, that was, yeah, that was my childhood. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's still, it is, I'm, I'm still, you know, a huge fan too. There's not, I, I think I'm so jaded too, because you go to concerts now and you're like, oh, well, this, <laughs> this isn't like the concerts I'm used to going to, you know, with all the like Cairo and the, ruins you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was, it was good times. Good times. Yeah. Traveling around two of the biggest acts in, in, in the world. At the yeah. Time. So, yeah. That was the other so. thing that was cool is I got to do a lot of traveling when I was little mm -hmm. to go visit my dad. So that mm -hmm. was, that was cool. What was it like working with that young actor that your character was bodyguarding? Oh, he was so great. Um, he was awesome. He, is a college student at Duke. Mm. He was extremely smart. He was a history major. And I remember asking him, we were sitting next to each other on the plane. And I remember like, we'd have a lot of, we'd have some time to talk. And I remember asking like, how do you do acting tapes in college? Like who tapes you? Who reads with you? Who's like, and he's like, mm. it's very difficult to find like a college kid who just wants to come to my dorm and tape me and read and stuff but he gets it done and so um he, you know he was he was really he was like extremely smart and i think he was um also a child star he was on a, Nick, a nickelodeon show oh, um for yeah. a while yeah and then he's like taking a little break for college but clearly he he missed a little bit to come back here and do quantum leap hmm. yeah I, he was great well, I mean, get, getting to, to Quantum Leap, uh, this is a question we usually ask a lot earlier in the interview, but uh, I know that you were globetrotting with 
the biggest acts in the world in the eighties <laughs> and the nineties. But did, were you familiar with the original Quantum Leap? Uh, did you have any history with the original series? I didn't. I didn't at all. I knew that this was a remake, um, but I I hadn't watched it. You know, and I kind of similar to the Star Trek thing. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that's the genre that's just. I've never gotten into not that I don't like it. I've just actually never seen any of it and like the Mm -hmm. sci-fi shows and things. So maybe I should start (laughs) since I've been involved in all this (laughs) sci-fi. Well, we can tell you this, you are on a really good episode of quantum leap and you're on a really good episode of DS nine. So that's a good place to start. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. The universe is telling you something. yeah, they are. I am excited to watch, though. I'm really excited. Do you have special plans for watching the episode uh, tomorrow night, I guess, this time? Pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was possibly, my mom is in town. She lives on the East Coast, usually. Um, so we were thinking I'd get together with my mom and my sister to watch it. That's which would awesome. be nice. Awesome. Nice. And I love that you guys get it early. That's so, mm-hmm. that's so great. <laughs> We love it. (laughs) It's it's very useful. (laughs) Well, this uh, interview has taken us down some routes that I've got to admit I was not expecting. We've we've talked about so many different things. Um, Davida, it's been so much fun having you on the show. Um, Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully the fans will uh, seek out your podcast. And I know you said you're sending off a lot of tapes at the moment. So hopefully we'll see you in some more stuff later this year. But for now, um, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun.